The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Our guest today will be Shane Smolian. At the half hour, he has some continuation things that we had from last week that we didn't quite get done. Tomorrow, we have Bill Meridian of Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria, currently in New York. And on the 30th of April, we are going to have a new guest. A gentleman that I've known for a long time, Andy Piccoli, he is from the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. We also have the Cycle Sciences uh, website. He's been around for a long time. He's going to be our guest uh, on the 30th. And then on Friday, we will have Tim Bost of Financial Cycles Weekly. That'll be the ones that we'll have this week. So that'll be fun to see what these folks have to offer. Now, I've posted the first chart here of the DAX. And as you can see, we've had a big, big move. Uh, hold on. This question is asked here about uh, Stan. Um, this change expected down move. I will ask. Um, I will ask Stan this this morning, and ask him that question, and maybe we can get him on next week. And I will be happy to look at silver in just a little bit. But let's get through with these uh, things with the. Uh, European stuff for sure. Uh, we've looked at the FTSE and we've looked at the, uh, I think I looked at, oh, don't put the FTSE up yet. Let's get that up here. And then we'll get on to some of these other things that you folks are asking us about. But folks, there is trouble in the Heritage House here at the offices of Duke and Duke, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is the ultimate conspiracy theory. Okay. Are you ready for this, folks? They don't make this stuff up. Let me take a look at this. This is the new quarter for the United States of America. And can you believe this is the reverse side? It's a, it's a commemorative of the bats, the mother bat and the baby bat from the Samoan Islands, the American Samoa Islands 2020. This is an actual coin. Folks, I am going to buy four rolls of those quarters because I believe that something is going to be, you know, just like the uh, Susan B. Anthony ones that never never went anywhere. I, I think this is going to be a collector's item. Can you imagine that, having the bats? And th this has to be planned um, oh, my God, a couple years in advance. If you remember a few years ago, Jack Lew, who was the secretary of the Treasury under uh, President Obama, he wanted to change the face of the $20 bill from Andrew Jackson to uh, Harriet Hubbard, I believe, who was one of the ladies that was responsible for the Underground Railroad that freed the slaves. I mean, there would not be a United States if it weren't for Andrew Jackson. Just read a little bit of history. I mean, my goodness, you know, he was the one that was against the Federal Reserve. And he was, a uh, well, anyway, let, let's move on to some of these things. But I think it's very unusual. Usual. This was brought to our attention by one of our friends uh, and students from over in China, and this is what the actual uh, picture uh, looks like if you were to uh, go in and look at this actual uh, picture of this bat. You'll see this is what they uh, what what the printing was before that, but that's really what it's uh, what it's all about. I, I'm going to do that as a as a uh, as a small investment, you buy a roll of quarters for ten bucks, and uh, they could be worth uh, some money down the road. Uh, when the, when the euros first came out, I bought uh, rolls of euros in each of the. Um, denominations of the 17 countries in the euros when they came out in 2000 when my grandson was born and those are those are worth quite a bit now i think they've tripled in price uh, you know since that time uh, being in collector's items so we'll be able to see uh, what they'll be in the future, but who knows? But they're beautiful coins anyway, and that's what I do, and that's what I'm going to do. So let's move on here and talk about the silver. Uh, we've been very silver and gold, um, you know, for a while here, and we still think we're going to be headed down a little lower. Let's take a quick look here at the silver market someone's asked us about, and I will believe you'll be able to see this is uh, what we're looking at. We're, uh, if you'll take a look at this, I believe we got down down to, I think we're going to get down to about 14, 
Right around $14 uh, an ounce is what I think we're going to get to on this move. Uh, the 382 retracement comes in at 1440, but this is this is certainly pointing down, and we're doing the same thing with the uh, w- w- with the thing with the. Um, with the gold too, the gold is, uh, you know, we had a high of 764. That was a 78 percent level. The 760, 1762 was a sell, and uh, you know we got down to 1705 last night. We rallied up to 1730 today. So I still think we're heading down in the in the gold also. And and the reason for that, folks, is because uh, you know we really don't have any, uh, uh, you know, what you call it. Uh, reason for the open interest. I mean, it's just dropping. It's not a good thing, really. I just put a quote in from The Art of War that Shane was kind enough to uh, bring it up, and that is, victorious win warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to work, go to war first and then seek to win. And if you fail to plan, you will fail. So that's one of the things that we're looking at. That book, The Art of War, was responsible for one of the best moves I ever had, and that was back in 91 when we were going to get go to war for Desert Storm and Stormin' Norman Schwarzkopf was the leader of the uh, Allied forces going in, and I knew that Schwarzkopf was a big, big fan of uh, Sun Tzu and the Art of War because he had it on his desk when he was being interviewed by Chris Wallace. And I said, my goodness, I said, I think this... No, it wasn't Chris Wallace. Who was it? Uh, I don't remember. Anyway... Uh, so I, I knew that because it was a new moon that night and uh, they were telling everybody the troops were all ready to go. And I knew that they would send, you know, the troops in at the d- darkness of the moon. And that turned out to be a big one. That was the biggest move down that we had in crude oil ever in one day up until this past uh, this past week. Uh, we, we closed the, the night that at forty two dollars a barrel. And then we, we went to war at midnight, which was four o'clock in the afternoon, California time. And they were lighting up downtown Baghdad, uh, you know, everybody thought that the price of crude oil was going to be going straight up, and it opened $11 a barrel the next day on its way to $11 a barrel. It went from $42 a barrel to $11 a barrel uh, a little bit under. Now, uh, all I, all, I, I'm not sure. I'm Hey, I, folks, I'm a technician. If you start asking me about fundamentals, you better ask somebody else because I really, I I, I fight that stuff because every time I hear something, I really have to, uh, you know, make myself believe, you know, trade what you see. This market has been going higher. We are approaching some really serious numbers this morning, folks. The 61% retracement in the S&P 500 comes in at uh, 29.23. And the, the two things that I've really followed following today will be Microsoft and old Apple. If we can get Apple to close above the uh, the 280, uh, 288 level, uh, that's going to be a breakout, in my opinion. And if we get Microsoft to close about $3 higher, that would also be a breakout in Microsoft. And remember, Microsoft and Apple are are 20 percent of the 25 percent of the nasdaq and if you you know the nasdaq was up 100 and both those stocks were down yesterday so there's there's buying coming in this the old federal reserve's got their wallet out okay 877-927-6648 If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I wanted to bring to your attention one of the charts that we talked about several times, and I believe that uh, it's really apropos now because it's had one heck of a move here. This is a chart of the U.S. dollar index, and we, we talked about the fact that three days ago we could not – Last, last week, of course, on Friday, we could not uh, take out those highs from April the 6th, even though we did do it on the reverse side of the euro when the euro was down at 107.20. And that's where the buy came in at 107.40. We've now rallied about 170, let me see, 40, yeah, about 160 points up from that level. And so if you happen to be in that, you know, raise your stop so that you lock in at least 100 pips is the way I would uh, play that. So let's take a look here at this dollar index because uh, this is really important, folks, because, um, you know, a lot of people when you hear these stories about the collapse of the U.S. dollar and the fact that the government is uh, the Treasury and the uh, Federal Reserve. Well, it's actually the Federal Reserve. They're just doing the Treasury is just doing the operations. They're just, uh, you know, pumping the priming the pump here. And, you know, it, it could come, it could go on forever. You know, who knows? Maybe we're never going to see hyperinflation again. And maybe we're going to see zero interest rates. And maybe, you know, we're all going to live in Camelot, which is certainly possible. But if this breaks, we have a setup where the, the euro could actually get up to that level of 113 again. This would be the ABCD in the dollar index coming down to about 96, and that could easily get that euro up quite a bit. So um, it's an interesting one because it's different than what most people are looking at, but this was a big divergence. I thought it was important enough to really pay close attention to it, and it certainly was. And, uh, you know, it doesn't always work that way, but when they do, that's what you, you really try to, uh, to take advantage of those. Now, since we were talking about the uh, Treasury bonds, let's just take a look here, what's happened to the bonds here recently. You know, we had that move up to that uh, 183 level. Uh, then we've come down just three handles, very, very quiet uh, down move between the 22nd and the, uh, the 28th today. Uh, we only made the 50% retracement. Uh, we're now back to, I believe, that 180, uh, 180.30 level or pretty close to it. 
So uh, we still have the possibility of making the 179, but the fact that it's taken six days to make the 50% retracement is a sign that it could be, you know, a pretty good move. And um, the ABCD structure takes it to 179, so I would be certainly waiting for that. You know, one of the things um, that you'll, if you ever read the book by uh, Bernard Baruch, My Own Story, uh, one of the things he says that's in there, he says that the markets exist to trap the most people in the biggest possible mistake that they can make all at the same time. It's words as a paraphrase, of course, but uh, I mean it, that's, this could be the big, uh, the big, uh, the big trap here is the Treasury bonds. Now, if it is going to be a trap, the market's going to tip its hand and say, "Uh oh, it really is a trap." We're going to see a day when the Treasury bonds, if it, if it does happen, where the Treasury bonds maybe drop more than three points in one day, which we haven't seen that for some time. So uh, remember, we live in interesting times, and anything can happen in it. It usually does, as Mark Douglas used to tell us. So I think it's important that we pay attention to that Treasury bond contract because it is quite uh, quite big. Now, there were some questions about the uh, this move we had yesterday and with the stock market up so much. There was a drop in open interest again. Open interest has been dropping. This is short covering, folks. That's not new buying coming into the market. That is short covering. And we had a really nice chart today from one of our friends over in the, the Valley of the Wind wind over there in Las Vegas. And if you take a look at that, uh, you'll notice this is the aggregate U.S. equity futures positions. And you can see the drop in open interest that's been happening here. And that is usually a bearish sign, but, you know, maybe it's different this time. And, of course, lots of times it is. But, you know, if you don't have new buyers coming in, uh, you know, that leaves a vacuum in the market. So it's important that we pay close attention to that. You know, anything could happen. There was one other chart that uh, Rich Anderson sent to us that I thought was relatively interesting here. And and this is the going back of the last 20 years when we had something like this before. You notice back in 08, where this was a number of media stories talking about the Great Depression. You can see what was happening there. But, uh, you know, they were talking about that, but the market went down for another two months. It didn't bottom until uh, November, excuse me, in March of uh, 2009. So uh, we had to pay attention to that. But there is a lot of talk of it in the news and with people out of work. But now we're going to be coming out of a... Uh, Coming out of our quarantine houses here in Tucson on um, on Thursday, uh, the restaurants aren't going to be open and stuff, but we will be able to get into to our cars and drive around. So that'll be a be a positive thing, I think. So we'll wait and see how that turns out. But um, anyway. We'll uh, wait and see what's happening. I just look at the technical pictures, folks, and just look at the numbers. That's what I try to do, and you know, I. Uh, um, that, that, that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, any questions? 877-927-6648, and we will have Shane on uh, at the break. Uh, that's an important one. I wanted to show you the euro because this was one of the things that uh, when we bought the euro down there at that 107.40 uh, level, You'll notice that we had the 382 retracement yesterday, and the market went uh, above those old highs up here at that 108. We got them almost to 109, and so the best way to handle that is what you do is you just raise your stop, you know, use a 50 pip trailing stop, and if it gets anywhere below that uh, 108, uh, 40 level, you just lock in 100 points and then move on to the next one. KC, that is coffee. Let's take a look at that. I believe. Uh, uh, the coffee, I'll see if I have an updated one, Bob. I, I believe it's close enough because we talked about the importance uh, of that level and it broke. So I wanted to get that here. Yeah, we, it's pretty much up to date here. So hold on here. We'll take a look at it here. Okay. Uh, there. The I don't know if they're going to, you know, P Pedro is saying, uh, if, hold on a second. Th this is the, there's the coffee. You see, we went below the 78% level, which was at 108. We're now trading at 106. That's not a good sign, folks. Uh, you know, I, uh, that's the ABCD level at that 106 level. So you don't have to risk very, very much there, but I don't like buying things below the 
the 78% level because uh, that that's, uh, means the trend is not nearly as strong as you might want to thought. Well, there it is. If it's if it, that's Bob saying if it's 107.80 now, there's your there's your answer, Bob. All you have to do is put your stop at the 106. You risk a, a penny and 1.8 cents, which is what roughly 500 bucks in coffee. And if it's right, it's going to work. If it's wrong, you know, you ride another horse. That's really what you're looking at. I don't see any difference in that. We have the same thing going on in wheat right now, so we'll just wait and see. One other thing before Shane comes on, folks, we are going to have uh, you know, meat shortages here in a few months. I don't know how many months it's going to take, but you know, with these sh people not uh, uh, supplying beef and, and pork, boy, believe me, that takes a long time to make a little piggy and a, and a little and a little feeder cattle. So it's going to be uh, it's going to get it get expensive down the road. You know, it really is. It's going to be a big surprise on some of these shortages in all countries. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Larry Pezzavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Shane Smolian, the wolf trader, on the line. Shane, how are you today? Good morning. Is this the office of Duke and Duke? It's 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You've got the mic, my right. friend. Give us your best shot. 
All right, we're in the right place. This is You've good stuff. It. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you. first, I'd like to start out by talking about, I have a new YouTube channel. Now, this is important for people. Uh, you can go to YouTube and type in Wolf Trader Futures, and this is going to allow us to do live broadcasts. So I had been doing the webinars on Zoom, but from now on, we're going to do this on YouTube. And we can also do private broadcasts for subscribers. So head on over to YouTube, just type in Wolf Trader and subscribe to that. I don't have any videos yet. I just announced it last night, but we already have 27 subs subs on that channel already. So that's going to be good because I can stream to you guys in, in HD. And every time I go live, it'll send you like a little desktop notification if you ring the bell. So that's going to be epic. So head on over there if you get a chance and subscribe to that because I'm able, I'm going to be able to do a bunch of mini broadcasts uh, to people. And that's easy for everybody to see. The Zoom, you know, you had to get it on your phone and everybody had to sign in at the same time. And it was like this whole thing, but that YouTube channel is going to be easy. So I like to start here with the, the fear and greed index. And the fear and greed index is still at a, uh, a, a relatively bullish reading. So that's good. And you know, my message uh, from the beginning to people, to my subscribers, was don't give up hope, okay? Uh, my message from the lows was always the following. We're going to make it, and we're going to make new highs. We're going we're gonna to recover from this fully, and the economy is going to recover, and the market's going to recover. And I actually pinned that tweet up. It's from March 20th, right at the lows, and I was very felt very strong about that from the beginning. I've never changed my position that this has been a bull market. And... I said in that tweet, it's not a good idea to bet against the United States. And what I meant by that was I, I didn't mean it from the sense of like, you know, like America number one, America best. I meant it from the fact that, you know, we're, we're a good people, we're a resilient people. And we have the brightest minds, the brightest men and the brightest women working on this. Like I said before, we have 70 companies working on a, on a vaccine. So we're going to solve this problem. We're going to get through this together. And the market's going to come out stronger. So I, I've always said that from the beginning. And... Um, I just think that's important to say right now that I actually got a call. I, I was deal, calling a subscriber over the weekend because I play tech support, helping people get onto the to the website. And I spoke to a subscriber and he told me something that really made me feel good, which was that he had made back all of his money uh, from the decline. And he's actually now ahead. And the market's not even uh, back to the new highs yet. So, you know, when I hear stories like that from subscribers, it makes me feel good that I think we're, we're spreading the word and we're sending a good message out there to people. So I think we're doing a good thing here by educating people about what the Fed is doing. And you can use that to your advantage as an investor. So I just kind of wanted to start with that. Um, this is the, the fear and greed index. And the fear and greed index, this is the graph of it. So we're still not even back to that 50% level. So clearly, even though the S&P is making these new highs, uh, the fear and greed is not by any means oversold right now or overbought right now. So that's good. The coronavirus, this is interesting because it, it looks like it's finally starting to make a little bit of a jog here uh, to make some kind of a global hump here. Now, this could just be short term. Uh, it could go down and then go back up again in the fall, which it probably will. But uh, this is a good sign that uh, we could be showing some pullback there in that in those global cases. And, and and as you said before, people are starting to come out of quarantine now. And I think uh, I think the economy is going to recover very quickly. Now, this is uh, the, the round the world view that I put on the gold uh, membership on Twitter. There weren't too many positions open yesterday. Uh, uh, silver and gold were kind of opposing each other. And they're not really doing anything today. But you were talking about the metals earlier on the show. And uh, most of these precious metals are going to be going into a solar cycle cell in the next day or two. So there's a good chance that these could decline uh, in the coming days, uh, silver, gold, and platinum. But again, that's a day-to-day -day thing that we talk about. But the, the main player down here is the S&P. Uh, this S&P, I've been saying this, beating on this drum since the lows. The Fed Juice Master Signal uh, wasn't a buy for the whole month of April. It did not get faked out any of the, any of the times on the way up. It meandered around, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, but it's still up, uh, and the long term is also still up. So I post this every day on the Twitter. That's the gold package. But even the newsletter subscribers, you know, that subscriber that said he made back all his money, uh, that's that's a newsletter person. So I do keep you more or less updated with the newsletter uh, in terms of what's going on with the markets. It's just that the gold membership gives you the day-to-day -day, uh, updates. 
constantly as the data comes in from the Fed. Now, this is the uh, S&P daily chart. So this is the daily Fed juice raw, and you can see that just this persistent move by the Fed, and they're, they're you know, you have these different levels that I measure here, but the overall uh, one you have to watch is this line here, and we are still trending higher, it's hooking higher, and the market's starting to follow. Now, you brought up an interesting point about the open interest, so and you said maybe it's different this time, and let me explain to you why I think it's different. This is why I think it's different for the S&P, maybe not the other commodities. The, Fed, the Federal Reserve works best when you have low volatility and light volume. And a lot of times that happens when the interest is dropping. So what happens here is it actually turns the model on its head because as the Fed's providing this liquidity, the lighter the volume is, the lighter the trading is, the more they can be active here to help this market go higher. So it's very confusing because we've all been trained that when open interest is dropping, that's a bad thing. But when you have the Fed active in here, that's actually a good thing in terms of the S&P. And, and that's what I've observed over time. So, uh, and it makes sense because if they're gonna be able to influence this, and they're, like, again, they come with like a persistent, um, persistent move over time. So they're like this gentle force that's just constantly there, constantly there, constantly there. So even if you get these volatile days over time, they're gonna be able to influence this. Now, this chart here was the 2019 and uh, this just shows you the difference between then and now. So back into 2019, 2018, 2019, when we had that big sell-off into that December, you saw that the Fed juice was persistently just falling, 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 falling into that period. And so that's not what we're seeing right now. So I just want to point out to people, I'm not just a bull to be a bull. I, I'm a bull based on the fact of what I'm looking at with the Fed. So if I saw a pattern like this, I would tell everybody, I'll be the first to tell you, hey, we've got a problem here. The market's, you know, the market's gonna go down. But if you go back to what we're seeing now, that's not what we're seeing. So again, you know, I'm, I'm reading the, what the Fed is doing. And to me, this is the way to make sense of the equity markets. I mean, if you wanna make sense of what's going on, this is the way to do it. And, and that's what I say on my website. I say we're making sense of the markets since 2008 and that's essentially when i started some type of a service i mean it evolved over time now now it's a lot larger but this is the weekly chart of the fed juice and again you can just see this huge surge that's going on uh with the federal reserve and there's there's no sign of that stopping uh and there's nothing and, and, and there's nothing to stop it i mean it's it, they can do whatever they want to do and i and i think that this model of the central bank, I think this is the correct model. I mean, I, I know a lot of people are gold people and they believe that this is some kind of a bad experiment. I don't think so. I think with the, the complex global market that you have and all these different sub economies that are popping up all over the world and the interconnectedness that we have now with the internet, that this type of a situation, this type of a policy is, is important. Well, it's just great information, folks. We'll be right back with Shane Smullyan, wolftrader.com. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. 
The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Shane Smolian of the WolfTraderFutures.com with some great information about the Fed. Could you please continue, my friend? Sure. So we're moving back through the 61% level, which you pointed out earlier in the show. I think once we get to this 76%, people are going to really start to, to panic, and there's a good chance that – this will continue right back up, and I think the long term, long term, I think the bull market will continue here. And this chart here that I've showed, this next one, I've always said, I've never changed the stance. It's still a bull market. I've never once varied from that. Okay, and and the reason is because of this. This is what I look at, and this is what's important. So the Fed is the Fed is what's important, and there's nothing wrong with a negative feedback loop. That's how your air conditioner works in your house. You know, when, when it gets too hot, the air conditioner turns on. When it gets too cold, the air conditioner turns off. That's essentially what the Fed is doing. They're a negative feedback loop. It works in nature. We see this everywhere. And in fact, it's the most efficient way uh, for systems to operate in nature. Even in your body, everything, fun biological function in your body is a negative feedback loop. So here's the S&P. Now, Larry, you remember when the S&P makes a new high, you promised to write me a good recommendation. I will do, so I'll do just, that right now. No, I will write my resignation day that day. No, that, that'll be my last day here. At T, T, and I'm serious. <laughs> that'll be my last day here. And I wish everybody the greatest luck. And I'll just go on day trading like I like to do. And the world will still go on. But if it makes a new high, Bubba, I will, I'll write there. You got you got my recommendation anytime because I think you're the cat's meow. But I'm serious. If it goes up there, I'm going to take my hats off to everybody and grab my little burrow, uh, Walter, and move on out. Go ahead, my friend. Continue. <laughs> yes, I know you said you would, Larry, but you have to make this one extra good, all right? Make it good. I will. I will. Throw, throw something in there about Drexel or put something good in there. I don't know. Just make it a good one. I could um, use the old Santa Claus trick. Okay. No, go ahead. Go ahead, my friend. <laughs> all right. So this is the um, this is the S&P daily here. So let, this is the one that we watch. Now, uh, the two things that we watch here that I talk about is the Fed juice here and the black arrow, which is the planetary speed index. So these are the two governing uh, things that we look at. So we talk about the tape times the cycle. And this is important because I, I want to make this point. When you get into Astro, you can have so many different indicators that you don't even know what you're looking at. And you have so many buy and sell arrows that it gets confusing. So you can see here this blue one, the solar cycle, I had a sell into here, but that's not what we're looking at. That's not the governing pattern. The governing pattern here is the Fed juice, which is here, and that's on the 25th, and then the planetary speed index, which is here. So when both of these, you see right here, this is when they were both in a buy, and now, actually on this particular one, I made a judgment a little bit earlier, I went along a little bit earlier, but the actual planetary speed index was long here, and it goes all the way up until about May the 5th. So. You know, that's what I look at, and that's you got to make a decision. And, and if you don't have a clear cut game plan, you can't make a decision. There's just too much to look at. You'll talk yourself out of a trade. And so you just pick a plan and you follow it and you execute it. And so that's what this is here. That's what these red lines are here. That's when the Fed uses with the planetary speed index here. 
and then the same thing here on the downside. So that's the governing uh, trend here on this, and that's essentially how we make these decisions um, on on the on these trades. So uh, again, I don't see any weakness here in this Fed juice. This is a this is a footprint that I haven't seen this since 2009, 2010. So uh, every time that this type of a footprint happens, we get huge surges in the S and P. And uh, I think this one could last. This one could last a while. This bull market could last a while. I mean, the, on the weekly time frame, it's making a low in terms of the Fed juice. I price it instead of dollars, like I price it in terms of Fed juice. And every time it does that, uh, it makes a low for about two to three years. I think this one could go for five years. I think there's a good chance this bull market could keep going, probably for five years. There's a chance of it. I mean, probably two to three is the pattern that it's been following. But this one could keep going. Um, the Fed's purchases have come down a bit. This is this is uh, last week, uh, and this is one of the reasons why that uptrend was meandering so much. I think uh, you see these fluctuations. You had 16 billion on last Tuesday, then it went down to seven, and then look, 20 and 27, it started rising again, and then the market started rallying again. So this is just one component of the Fed juice. I mean, the balance sheet is not everything. I look at all of the operations of the Fed, and I, and and. You know, subscribers were asking me, they're like, oh, look, the purchases are going down. Is this bad? Is the market going to go down? And the answer to that is no. I mean, I look at many things. It's not just purchases. So uh, looking at the whole thing combined here with this master signal, I really didn't see any weakness. I mean, it had a little jog down, but it's still very strong in this very strong profile. And one of the things you talked about this interesting on the show, too, that the markets will make you do the exact wrong thing. I mean, this uptrend is the exact epitome of that because we had this period into here, and then it started doing this meandering back and forth like this. And this this really caused a lot of hyperpolarization of people. And the MO of this rally has been the kind of meander around, jog sideways, pop up, go up, meander around, and then pop back up like this. So by any, every means, this has been a very difficult rally to stay long on, and you need the patience to do that. And and to, to have that patience, you have to have this this – Fed juice system in here essentially because this told me that there was there was strength in here the whole time, and then we try to align that with the planetary speed index here, and that's uh, and that's how I I come up with these determinations. I'm just following the rules, and I I made a right here last week when this went down. This was the oil crash. Now relative to oil, the S and P did pretty pretty well, so people. People need to understand that that relative to oil and copper, S and P held up pretty well. I did put a line in the sand here. I told everybody 2648 is really a level that if it goes below that, then you know something's wrong. I mean, it shouldn't be going down if the Fed juice is up and, and the planetary speed index is up. But look what it did. It turned right back around and started heading right back up. So, I mean, I'm just following the rules. And when I posted, posted that video last Wednesday, I told everybody, I said, look, you know, look, it could fail. I sent out an email. I said, it could fail. And this is, you know, this is the, the level. But the rule is it's still a buy, and look what it did. It turned right around and went back up. And I don't think you're going to be able to have that p level of patience without the Fed juice and the planetary speed index. It's just really difficult psychologically and emotionally to deal with these turns. Uh, and, the, that, and that characteristic is completely different than the downtrend. I mean, and, and I've been studying this, and I study the markets. Each uptrend is its own unique person. And I say that like, a, like I'm, I'm basically – talking about it like if it's a personification but this is a you, you have to study it and so i i talk about this to the subscribers i said the mo of this has been to kind of meander around down and then pop right back up and it's that's the personality of this and the next one will be different and so we have to pay close attention to these things because you can't just use a one size fits all approach for the markets because each symbol is different and each rally is different and now since you had qe into here from this point forward, this is a completely different market than we saw back into here. These are not the same characteristics anymore. So we need to kind of adapt to this, and the Fed juice allows us to adapt to that. And so this Fed juice really is uh, attuned to the market because this Fed juice is optimized for the S&P. So it's going to say, how well is the S&P moving in relation to what the Fed is doing? And that's that's able to tell us here that we really never lost any strength here. Even when it went down near that stop level, it turned right back around and went up. So, you know, that's that's what we do here. And I think we're doing a good service here. I think that newsletter 
the, uh, the $39 a month, you're getting a good value there. And I'm, I'm constantly doing the research here on this. And this is a real time thing. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm constantly collecting this data every single day. I'm co collecting it right now. I'm collecting it this morning uh, and we collect it all through the day. Stay with us, folks. Shane, we'll be right back with you after we pay a few bills. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Shane Spillian, WolfTraderFutures.com. How can the folks reach you, my friend? Well, first of all, I encourage everybody to go to YouTube and type in Wolf Trader Futures. Sign up for that channel because I'm going to be doing live broadcasts from there. But then the website, Wolf Trader Futures here, you can sign up for this newsletter. There's some tabs at the top up here. You can go to where it says uh, uh, sign up here, and then you can sign up for the newsletter or the gold member login. I, I recommend that everybody starts with the newsletter because this is a lot of information. This is a whole different universe of terms, and the way I look at the market is different than anybody you've ever seen. Uh, so everything I do is unique. So. The newsletter is a better place to start. There's a free membership here, a free member login you can go to, which is right here. All of our packages come with a seven-day money-back or seven-day free trial. So if you sign up for the newsletter now, you get last month's newsletter, and the new one is coming out May 1st. And then I put the videos up twice a week. Also, this is important. 
on the website, there's a, a free email sign up list. Go ahead and sign up there. Also, if you sign up for the free uh, the free membership, sign up on this on this opt in list here because that's going to get you on the 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 update list for the emails. So, uh, this is a better e there are different email lists. This one is a better email list. So go there and fill in that form. So it's just to summarize again, go to the YouTube channel, sign up for that. Uh, go sign it. Uh, go to the main uh, website, sign in on this free email list, and then become a free member up here. Uh, on this when you go to free member login so you can just check out what's going on just with the updates if you want to join like i said you go here where it says sign up it'll take you to a page and you can sign up for the newsletter or the gold membership and the newsletter is 39 39 bucks a month you're getting a lot of information for 39 dollars a month just to get started and then that will help you uh, learn the terms and, and decide if you want to go forward with the gold membership or not. If you want to stay with the newsletter, that's fine too. Uh, everybody's got different needs and different uh, goals in the market. But I think for the S&P, the newsletter is the S&P. I think we're, we've really got a, a, a good uh, measure of the market with, with the Fed use here. I think we're able to really model this in a way that makes sense. I mean, these things can fail, of course. Nothing is 100%. But <laughs> I think what we're talking about makes sense. And we've been saying this uh, the whole time and it's playing out. Good man. I'm working on your recommendation, my friend. So it'll take me a while. So keep those cards and letters coming in. We'll have you on again soon, folks. Shane Smolian, WolfTraderFutures.com. And we will see you on the flip side tomorrow with our guest, who will be none other than Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. May God bless.